Hey, this is something new. I'll explain at the end of the video, but for now, let's get to the topic. Years ago, I made a video talking about Ace's creation and how he came to be my mascot, but I think that video kind of sucks, so I wanted to make a new one. And things have happened since then, so there's new information too. Ace was created in like June 2015 when I was like 17 years old. It started off with friends getting into this um, like super niche fandom that made OCs using airplanes and dragons like combined. It's a species created by um, SCP Kid from Fur Affinity. Anyway, so I decided to join in and create my own. The idea was that he was based off like an FA-18 Hornet. However, he kind of looked absolutely nothing like one. So I just rolled with it anyway though. <laughs> At first his name was just Blue, but I thought that that was too generic, so I named him Ace, which comes from the Pokemon move Aerial Ace. After a couple months though, some drama happened and the group disbanded. I'm, I'm not gonna get into detail on that though, because that's just kind of... I, I don't know, it doesn't seem like <laughs> it'd be appropriate for this. I also kind of grew apart from the fusion idea. At the time, a lot of friends were like gifting me art and they were changing his design in very subtle ways. Like uh, a friend added a bandana around his neck because they didn't want to draw a neck. <laughs> but it stuck around forever. Other friends gave him a more muted color palette because I used like this insanely bright blue and it, it looked pretty uh, interesting. Um, some people drew him without his goggles and his beady eyes, they gave him actual eyes, and eventually just moving the airplane wings altogether. I've seen people from that group, like the plane dragon group, abandon their characters and sold them off. And it was kind of sad to see, but I didn't really feel like I could personally do that because it was like the only character that I had at the time, and it was like my first character too. So I grew pretty attached to him, and I even decided to use him as my Sona. Like, I used him on Skype, I used him on Discord, and he was basically what you saw when you spoke to me on those platforms. Fast forward to mid-2016. At the time, my channel was branded as a Blastoise, and my username Camix reflected that, because it's the Japanese name for Blastoise. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep myself in a box, only doing Pokemon-related content forever. I was even regularly doing Undertale remixes at the time, so it didn't really make sense to me. <laughs> so I went from Ace being my Sona on Discord and Skype, to him being like my channel's brand image too. And it started off with the Spider Dance remix. The video was received well, but a lot of people were pretty confused as to who the character was. And I mean, I'll admit, it was a pretty weird way to introduce the character to everyone because people just made tons of guesses as to what he even was. Like, they didn't even know what he was. Uh, some people thought that he was Aaron's son, you know, like the seahorse guy from Undertale. Uh, some people thought he was Azrael, and some people thought he was a pony. Actually, a lot of people thought he was a pony. Like, so many comments calling me a brony and hurling insults because of their own wrong assumption. <laughs> like... It was probably my first encounter with the internet and its overwhelming stupidity, and it will be far from the last. So in about 2017, this was around the time I felt like he needed clothes, because his anatomy was getting more and more human-like, and some art pieces, like this one here, felt a little uncomfortable, not gonna lie. <laughs> so I pitched the idea to some friends about giving him clothes, and that's where this outfit came from. It's basically just my usual wear, like hoodie, t-shirt, jeans, and the t-shirt had a little time gear on it to serve as like a tiny nod to my Mr. Dungeon roots. So around late 2017, I was going through a bit of a rough patch because I wasn't really sure how I felt about using a furry character as my internet persona, because at that point I've gotten a lot of pretty crappy experiences with other people. Like parasocial relationships where some people got a little too friendly with me because they liked Ace so much, or people who just instantly hated me for having him as the forefront of my channel and gave me death threats and stuff, which is, okay, weird. Um, <laughs> obviously now I couldn't care less because I'm 26 years old, but back then I was 19 and I was really naive, and I also wanted everyone to like me. So for a while, I changed my profile picture to just be a cartoon version of myself, and even use face cam a lot during those times. It was a really weird time for my channel, and it felt like I kind of just, you know, removed the one thing that helped me stand out, e whether it was good or bad. So a few months after that, I just went back to Ace being the forefront. He went through a few more design changes each year because artists drew him like with little design elements that they like added. Like for example, one person had the great idea of making his hair darker and that turned him into roughly what his design currently is today, with the exception of adding ears and piercings to him in 2019. Up until 2021, when I started seeing a lot of FNF mods of original characters created, 
I felt like this would be a great and fun way to give Ace personality and properly introduce him to people and even write original music with purpose because like, I didn't have something to write it for. I would just be writing music for the sake of it and it was just really difficult for me. Anyway, with that, the development for Versus Ace started and it kind of went into this whole thing where um, I was like thinking about how he would be, like what he would say, what he would act like, what he would sound like. And, you know, I settled on his voice literally just being my voice, so, I mean, that made it easy. <laughs> By the time the mod was out, people loved him. Like, I was seeing so much fan art and so many people who saw him as, like, a comfort character, and I couldn't be happier. His personality, admittedly, isn't really a lot like myself, but if I felt like it made a lot more sense for him to be super friendly and outgoing, which made him very attractive to some people in every sense of the definition. <laughs> But, but nevertheless, it's absolutely surreal seeing him in a playable game and seeing that he actually has fans. This was also around the time where I started commissioning really cool stuff like a 3D model and a VTuber model, which you'll see right here. Hi. Um, <laughs> he even went on to giving him different forms, like the minus form and the isolation form, and I sold plushies of each form too, which was awesome. It's been a wild ride and I wouldn't change anything. I'm also kind of glad I can use him to represent myself because I'm not huge on showing my face often. Like I tried before with face cam videos and live streams and I even bought like this really nice camera to use it. But I don't know, I just felt really awkward. So using like the VTuber instead has been so much better for me. <laughs> okay, so for the explanation at the end of the video that I promised, um, a lot of you know me for music stuff, and while I like making music, I focus a lot more on quality over quantity, and while that's great for putting out good stuff for you guys to enjoy, I just feel like I want to do more. So I have a nice microphone, some editing experience, and why not use it? So you'll likely be seeing more videos like this, and they won't replace the music stuff, but here's also a playlist that you can listen to of all my music back to back, so there won't be any problems with that. Anyway. Yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for watching. That sounded like so corporate. Whatever. <laughs>